The scientific revolution was an era filled with great minds and incredible advancements, with pioneers challenging previously established norms and traditions, and embarking on a newly exhilarating scientific journey. Two of the most brilliant minds in the history of science emerged and left their mark on human history during this era, those two minds being Sir Isaac Newton and Robert Hooke. However, their achievements and their brilliance were not the only aspects of their careers that made a lasting impression. The two also share one of the most legendary feuds in the history of science. The prodigious mathematician and physicist throughout his career would trade blows with the ingenious polymath, leaving behind a path of jealousy and bitterness that would leave an impact lasting centuries with its effects still being felt to this very day. Little introduction is needed for Newton, who is considered one of the most brilliant minds in all of human history. He rose to prominence shortly after receiving his Bachelor of Arts degree from Cambridge in 1665, becoming known for discovering the binomial theorem that same year, inventing the reflecting telescope in 1668, and for his publication of On Analysis by Equations with an Infinite Number of Terms in 1669. Perhaps the lesser known side of this historic rivalry stems from a self-made Robert Hooke, who took an inheritance of 40 pounds he received from his father's death when he was 13 years old and later used it, alongside scholarships, to become an apprentice to the renowned painter Peter Lely. After coming to the realization that the smell of the oil colors gave him frequent headaches, however, he left this apprenticeship to enroll in Westminster School in London. He quickly built up many talents, from learning Latin and Greek, to playing the organ, and even to mastering Euclid's elements. In 1653, he enrolled in Oxford University, where he was adopted as an assistant to the famous Robert Boyle from 1655 until Hook received his Master of Arts degree in 1662. Hook had already established himself as a multi-talented prodigy discovering Hooke's Law in 1660 and inventing the balance spring in the same year. His quickly built reputation led to him being granted the position of Curator of Experiments in the Royal Society of London in 1661, becoming the first paid scientific researcher in England one year before graduating. The relationship between Newton and Hooke started off fairly cordial but the seeds for rivalry were sown from the very beginning of their relationship in 1672. Hooke was a well-established scientist already, having been a member of the Royal Society for several years and having also published his most famous work, Micrographia, for a few years as well. Newton, a professor at Trinity College, was deep into his development of calculus, but was also working on optics at the same time and had sent a paper on light and colors to the Royal Society. The reigning theory on the color of light at the time was based upon the popular idea that light behaved as a wave. Proponents of this theory believed that when light passes through a prism or lens, it becomes corrupted by the prism or lens, and this corruption is the source of the color. Newton, however, was quick to go against the grain, challenging this popular theory. Through his experiments, he discovered that if light is sent through one prism and then through a second, the light that was corrupted could be reconstructed into its original white light. This led him to conclude that color was an inherent characteristic of light and not due to corruption from the prism itself. These are the conclusions he presented in his 1672 paper to the Royal Society, which Newton labeled as his corpuscular theory of light. But Hooke was not so inviting of these ideas. Although he admired the experiments done by Newton, he privately rejected Newton's conclusions, and Newton, being unable to take criticism lightly, withdrew his publication and retreated from scientific discussion for a few years. During this time spent in solace, he focused on topics such as alchemy and biblical interpretations. When Newton published his second paper discussing light, however, Hooke met him with a much more favorable response, and their relationship still remained fairly cordial, leading to them having several correspondences throughout the coming years. Hooke and Newton corresponded with one another a few times between 1672 and 1679, 
and this time definitely marked the healthiest era of their relationship. A correspondence between the two in 1675 contains Newton's most famous quote, If I have seen further, it is by standing on the shoulders of giants. This quote has been inaccurately twisted into Newton making a jab at Hooke's apparent short stature, but it is merely a tribute Newton was making to giants in science that came before him. 1679 marked the year that Newton and Hooke would correspond on theories of gravitation, and although it would start well, it would quickly trend toward a bitterness that would last the rest of their lives. In 1687, Newton published his famous book, Principia, which included his universal theory of gravitation. Upon reading this book and seeing the universal law of gravitation, Hooke became enraged and claimed that it was he who gave Newton the idea through their private correspondences in their previous years. Hooke demanded credit from Newton, particularly for the inverse square law that lies in this relationship, but Newton denied it, claiming that Hooke did nothing more than rekindle Newton's interest in astronomy and brought nothing new to the table for Newton to explore. Further, Newton claimed that he had already established the inverse square law prior to Hooke suggesting it, and that Hooke was unaware of this when he proposed it himself. Whether or not there is truth behind Hooke being the mind behind the inverse square law, there was another aspect of this theory that Hooke had more of a right to claim credit for. The real contribution Hooke made through the prior correspondences came from suggesting a centripetal force. This was an idea that was very new to science at the time, an inward acting force as opposed to an outward acting centrifugal force. Without the concept of centripetal force, the theory of universal gravitation published by Newton was unthinkable. Perhaps Hooke did deserve some credit after all but chose the wrong component of Newton's piece to dispute. Regardless, the fallout of the battle over the contents of Principia between the two left a lasting impression. The feud between Newton and Hooke lasted throughout the remainder of their lives, extending even past Hooke's death. The fact that Newton outlived Hooke definitely allowed him to have the last laugh. Newton, a member of the Royal Society since 1672, became its president in November of 1703, eight months after the death of Hooke. The year following, Newton republished his Corpuscular Theory of Light in his book entitled Optics in 1704. There are even claims suggesting that after Newton became elected president to the Royal Society, he had all of Hooke's portraits destroyed in an attempt to have him forgotten and lost in the history books. These are unverified claims, however, but it is true that there are no surviving portraits of Hooke to this day. There have been some recreations based upon descriptions of him through texts, however, most notably a series of paintings made by historical painter Rita Greer. Although Hooke did have a reputation for attempting to steal credit from more scientists than just Newton, along with having quite a combative nature, perhaps the historical treatment of Hooke is not quite fair. After all, Newton was also quite combative and unwilling to accept criticism. There are a plethora of achievements and contributions to many fields made legitimately by both men, and they are both giants in the history books. The feud between the two men shouldn't overshadow that, but also shouldn't go ignored, as it reveals more layers to the story and shows all sides of the giant historical figures, including their human flaws. Their rivalry highlights not only their personal ambitions, but also the intense pressure to succeed in a rapidly advancing scientific landscape. Their legacies are forever intertwined, and through them we can perhaps learn and strive for a more cordial way forward throughout the progress of science in the future. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing. Click here if you want to see more scientific progress made throughout the history of modern science. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.